this session I'm going to talk about soil. It's one of my favorite topics. My background is in soil science and even though you have a lot of options for soil out there, your soil does make a difference. So what I'm using for a soil in this home production system, this is a, a sunshine mix number four, which is basically just a mix of peat and perlite. It's probably about a 85-15% mix. Now, I did add some compost to this, and the basic idea, or the basic literature around sprouts and microgreens talk very frequently about the seed having all the nutrient it needs to grow into a good sprout or microgreen. And I think this is true, and we know this because people can grow sprouts in jars, and we can, we can grow microgreens on uh, mats without any nutrient in them. But uh, I found that having some nutrient in the soil does give you a, a nicer product. I find it grows a little better, and I think, you know, my hunch is you're less likely to get disease. Uh, and the idea isn't so much that we're going for the sterile environment, it's more that we're looking for a microbially diverse environment. And so what I've done with my mix is I've just added about like a, a double handful of, of compost into this mix. And so now I've got a, a peat, perlite, and compost mixture here. And it's a mix I've never used before. Uh, in the past I had a, a mix made for us uh, from a company. Uh, and this intuitively I hope works well, but we'll see. We might get mixed results. Uh, the type of peat you use, the type of compost you use. There are so many factors with each mix that it's really hard to know how something is going to work. So we'll try this one out and see how it works. So I want to talk a little bit about what soil does because we sometimes forget about that. When we think about a microgreen that's going to have like a 7 to 12 day life cycle. So that, that's all, that's its whole life from seeding to harvest and it's basically growing in a medium of soil. Well, we'll get into growing mats and hydroponics another time. So soil is going to make a difference. So first thing to think about is that's the rooting space. That's the thing that is going to hold your microgreen there and hold it together. And microgreens do, uh, do root quite vigorously and it really varies between um, what you're growing. You know, the small stuff like arugula and nebraskas have very little rooting space, but sunflower, pea, and wheatgrass, their roots will take up every square centimeter of soil within that tray. And I've actually got a tray of wheatgrass here, it's all finished. And as I pull this up, like, the, the wheatgrass totally engulfs this, so I can see some soil in here, um, but in a really, really uh, robust tray of, of wheatgrass or pea as well, you almost can't see the soil because there's so much rooting in there. So you need a soil that um, is porous, that the roots can move through easily, and that's one of the reasons we like this peat and perlite mix. Uh, you can replace the peat with coir, which is a, a coconut fiber, a byproduct uh, of, of the coconut industry. It works fairly well. Some people use just peat, just coir, so there's all sorts of variations. Uh, I, I've mixed it around and done about a, like a 50% peat, 20% coir, and then 25% perlite and 5% compost. That's a mix that's worked really, really well for me. Uh, I find too much coir and it doesn't do too well. Not enough perlite and it doesn't do well. So it just changes the dynamics of the soil. So yeah, we need something that's going to be a good rooting space. We also need something that's going to hold water well, and that's exactly what both uh, peat and coir do. But we also need something that releases the water. If, if, if the soil holds the water too tightly, there's no space in that soil for oxygen. And roots need oxygen to survive. We think about the upper part of the plant uh, absorbing CO2 and releasing oxygen. Okay, well that's not what happens in the roots, the roots actually respirate. So they need to have that space uh, for oxygen. If they have, to, if there's too much water in there, uh, you're gonna drown, you're gonna drown your crop. Another thing to consider with that is the type of compost you use. Uh, a really light, sort of fibrous, woody compost is gonna do better, whereas a mushroom manure often holds water too strongly and it actually can give you a, a very difficult mix to work with. So you wanna think of a light soil that holds water well, uh, but also allows water to drain. And of course you need to have drainage holes within your tray in order for it to do that. Uh, we will get into, uh, into growing mats and, and hydroponic stuff at another time, but uh, I have this crazy idea that food should be grown in soil, so that is the method I'm going to talk about. And if you have garden space, once you've, you've used the soil and composted, 
It, it can go into your garden. So, you know, it's not just sort of something that's going to be composted and, and taken away. You can use this soil again. So you, consider you can consider your microgreen system a place where this soil flows through. So you really, really get a lot of use out of this soil. A thing to think about with soil as well is how little things can make a very, very big difference. Um, I talked about trays earlier. This is the 10 by 20 one inch deep tray from uh, Bootstrap Farmer. Really heavy duty tray. I'm looking forward to use it. I have yet to use these. This is a similar tray, a 1020 tray, but it's an inch and a quarter deep. And, and if, for folks who are growing other things, you've probably, you're probably used to growing it in a two inch tray. So when people go from a two inch tray, and you see a lot of people take a two inch tray and half fill it up, we'll talk about that another time. But in a, in a one and a quarter inch tray, this, this has been about the minimum amount of soil I've been comfortable using. And it's, it can be difficult with some crops to keep up on the watering, um, to get everything right. This tray is a quarter of an inch smaller. Um, and when you're going from an inch and a quarter to an inch, that's actually a 20% reduction in soil space. So I'm gonna have 20% less soil to hold water uh, as rooting space. And so this is going to affect um, the, the growth of my crop. I'm hoping that I can manipulate the growing conditions enough to get a very similar yield, but I will probably just get a slightly lower yield with this tray at an inch deep than I do in an inch and a quarter deep tray. I know that because I've grown uh, microgreens in two inch deep trays and my yield is much better than it is in an inch and a quarter tray. Uh, that extra rooting space just allows them to really grow, less competition below the soil, uh, and lots of space to hold water. Uh, really makes it a nice growing condition. So, yeah, some of the basics of soil, just to review, you want a good mix of peat, uh, perlite, or vermiculite, and compost. Five to eight percent compost uh, is probably going to be sufficient. Uh, you want it to hold water, but also release water very well. Um, what's nice about the materials we're talking about is they're very light, um, and they're easily procured. So there's no reason you can't find this type of soil mix just about anywhere. There's lots of options for soil, so definitely try some stuff out. But hopefully those guidelines and that overview gives you a sense of what you need to do to create a good rooting environment for your micrograins. So now we're going to take a look at um, some sowing, prepping our trays for sowing. And in a future, uh, a near future episode, we're going to take a look at light. That's a topic that's very popular with a lot of microgreens growers.